Okay, the S&P 500 the NASDAQ 100. We're going to jump into Qs and SPY specifically here, then we'll jump into more equities. But let's just talk about what's happening on the week. Now, first of all, to end the week, made higher lows on Qs essentially since basically Wednesday, just pushing and pushing and breaking up. You had about two major breakouts. You had obviously the early on in the week. And then you had to close the week, breaking out once again, very strong there on tech. And that is tech specifically. When you look at some of the ETFs, you get a better viewpoint of that, like XLK. Again, QQQ is basically just following that. We look at some of the down, you know, ETFs, XLI, XLV, XLC, right? The, these are a little bit more choppy or on the downside, right? That's that's the concern there. Like uh, what's the healthcare XL? XLV already covered that one. We go to like consumer discretionary, um, we're still pulling back. And these are some of the names in the NASDAQ as well. But it's important we understand what's really moving the market. It's XLK, tech, 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 tech. Okay. And that's what's breaking you out here and getting that continuation so far. But going into this week, it's a little bit slower than last week. As we look at the overall, the, the economic calendar, we can see there's not a lot going on. If you want to look at this, by the way, it's investing.com. Check it out. Um, not sponsored by them, but just a free calendar. Um, so scroll down, you can kind of see we have some auctions going on. Fed members talking. Again, I think all Fed members talking will be net bullish, especially early on in the week. Um, personal opinion. Retail sales will be coming out Tuesday. Not that huge. We'll see though. Um, more Fed members coming out there. Atlanta Fed GDP. That'll be interesting there as well. That continues to be on the uptick. So very interesting what's happening there, especially with earnings that will be coming in the next few you know, weeks as well. Um, more Fed members. But again, there's no new real data coming out as far as inflation. Now, this is where things get interesting when we look at mortgage rates. We'll talk about that here in a second. Some jobless claims on Thursday. But that's about it. Jobless claims, that's about all you really care about. Philadelphia manufacturing will also be important. But so far, that's been moving in the right direction as well. So those are the biggest things on the week. As we look at this, nothing to really be worried about, in my opinion, besides maybe Philly Fed, unemployment. And then you have your home sales, which, again, I am pretty bullish on. Okay, so before we go into what's happening here on the S&P, Qs, and an overall viewpoint here, right? Actually, we'll cover S&P first, and then we'll go into everything else. But... You, you look really good, right? You know, you had the obvious breakout there from Wednesday, pushing up, you know, great hole from CPI. Now we're kind of just consolidating sideways here on the S&P. DIA Dow moving the worst out of the bunch. Um, that's the, the easiest thing to point out here. Obviously, you know, you want to break back up. You are making higher lows, though, worth mentioning since um, April. You continue to make those higher lows. I'm just letting you know since mid-April when you found that low on the overall market, that is the good thing to acknowledge and be watching. Um, but you want to see Dow get some more love. If Dow gets more love, I do think it rolls over into Qs and a SPY and the kind of everything there as well. You can see SPYs in the middle ground. Qs are obviously performing the best, but SPY will erupt and break out if Dow starts to get that love as well in any of those sectors. Another really weak sector right now is XLF financials, like banks. So another thing you should be watching pretty closely. But before we go into the equities and going into mortgage rates, Let's cover this. Speaking of trading, if you've been using a basic investing app for the past few years, I highly recommend that you step it up and graduate to a better investing platform that can grow with you, which in my opinion is the today's sponsor, Moomoo. Like other platforms, Moomoo has a super intuitive user interface, really easy to use, but unlike the other platforms, they have everything that you're using right at your fingertips. Whether it be your analysis tools, up to the minute live data on the markets, what's happening with options data. And it's worth mentioning while other platforms charge a premium for the quality of data that you're getting here at Moomoo, Moomoo does not, does not charge a dime when it comes to getting live data on the charts. So for any of you that are serious about your investment journey, Moomoo's platform is worth checking out. The link is down below. It helps me out, it helps you out. If you have any questions, comment down below. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so what I want to do is jump into mortgage rates and talk a little bit about this. Um, also, too, I'm making like either one or two videos a week now on the second channel. So if you guys want to, uh, this is the channel right here, Tyler Wilson OD. Um, just check it out. Uh, I'm going to be making this like education and I'll be making like um, fundamental videos over here as well that I just don't have like the time to really make on this channel. And I think this channel is more for technicals, but do what you want to do. Anyways, um, just explaining some of my bullish thesis going into what's happening over the next few weeks. Um, the 30-year fixed mortgage rates, this is really interesting when we see what's kind of happening here. Um, I would just want to give you an example, right? So when we look at like October and November, so in end of October, obviously rates peaked on mortgage rates and you dumped into December. Well, we go back to the NASDAQ specifically, you can look at SPY as well, but specifically the NASDAQ, I think you get a really good visual of what happened back here. Um, well, someone slipped a Viagra uh, into the bull's um, drink and you went 
parabolic. I mean, you literally erupted. I mean, this is probably your best run that you had um, in like a month span, two maybe two months, 20% run on the NASDAQ. Um, for instance, um, you know, we had a really good bounce here, good, good reaction, um, but it's about 16% off of that major dip there as well. Just food for thought. Okay, so an even better run back there. And if we equate this to this entire time since then, you've still bound 15% over the last basically five, almost six months now. So again, food for thought, two month time, six month time, worth mentioning. Okay, worth mentioning, right? And so what we're seeing here now is that rates have again started to accelerate back to the upside, right? And now they're dropping, right? This is very important that, to understand since the beginning of May. You topped out at 7.5% on your mortgage rates, and now you're down your 7%. Okay, now this is why I always talk about this in detail here on the channel, is what's happening with the 30-year yields and what's happening with bond, the mar bond market in general. Because again, this all comes right back down to the bond market and what's happening here. You see, we topped out again here in October into December. You just dropped like a sack of rocks, right? Well, that's what's happening now. You're dropping pretty aggressively um, with what's happening to data inflation data. Okay. And so as long as this continues, I think the 30 year old continues to drop down. Um, and the only like hiccup in this moment right now is the DXY bouncing based on, you know, foreign monetary policy. Um, so that's worth mentioning. So I think this could easily start dropping as well in the DXY back into yields and pushing again, the U S 30 year specifically towards the downside, the more bearish you see the 30 year yield get again, it's going to be the better we see the mortgage rate drop and the more the mortgage rate drops. Yes, yes, yes. The market gets more and more bullish which is why I think going into existing home sales, I want to see what's happening because you're seeing an uptick on uh, pending sales already. Um, and so going into summer, I think it'd be a good hot summer for the real estate market, um, even leading into the presidential election, which is in September. Now, I'm not saying go long into September, but food for thought, interesting little viewpoint that we're at. Um, again, I'm not telling you when to start hammering and going, you know, deadbeat long and all in here at highs because I'm not. Um, I was very bullish uh, weeks ago. Um, I've been saying it for a while. If you guys do not follow me on Twitter, I recommend doing so. Um, I post a lot. I've been posting like more than I've ever posted on Twitter. So you're getting a lot of free information there, right? I understand like Discord's not always open. So again, take advantage of the content you can get. But I've been saying this for a while there. So anyways, food for thought, things I'm watching. So going this week, I think that's probably the most important with home data um, and to see yields continuing to drop. But again, all you're really watching for here on Qs is hold above 478.4. Above that level, you're very bullish, obviously breaking all time highs. Going to spy, all you're looking for here is to get above basically of uh, uh, $544. You hold above that. Boom. You look very good as well. Top names on the market that I'm watching one, number one, Apple. Um, I plan on making again too. like, I can't really make singular videos on this main channel. This is more of like a daily TV show, if you will, right? Where I go over the market. Um, but going on the second channel, I can make more videos on why I like Apple, why I like long-term names, why, you know, I think the market's bullish, right? And so it's just more of me explaining the market. Um, so I'm probably going to make a video pretty soon on Apple and why I'm just so bullish on the stock. Um, but anyways, I'm a big fan. Um, so I'd be watching Apple. I think they have some of the most upside. Uh, it's also worth mentioning the guy from the big short, Steve Eisman, I think is his name. Eisman. Um, yeah. So he has been pretty... Um, He's been pretty big. He's been pretty big on his viewpoints on what's happening with AI and specifically Apple. And he thinks that Apple is the next big winner of what's happened with the second wave of AI because they're focusing directly on consumers, which I don't think anyone else is doing besides maybe Microsoft with Chad GPT, but I still think even then it's not super consumer friendly. So anyways, I love what's happening with Apple. Um, I'm not saying it's going to have an NVIDIA type reaction to where it runs, you know, you know, 900% in a year. That'd be cool. But um, yeah, like, I don't know if it's gonna have that type of reaction, but we'll see. Um, NVIDIA as well. Interesting here. What's happening with semiconductors, the other area of the market with tech, that's definitely moving us to the upside. Um, so semiconductors continue to look strong. You're having an AVGO split as well. Um, but again, I'm not super interested in these names right now. Um, I still need to have great value for day trades, but I'm not like buying calls on these things up, you know, another 50%, 40% on the, on like the past two months. That's kind of crazy, right? Um, when you go to some of these option chains as well inside Moomoo, like we can see that like they're just super expensive and you're overpaying right now. Um, I mean, not even that you're overpaying, you just, you have to, you have to bet big if you want to bet on these, right? You know, so again, not super interested, but I get, we were calling these out. Like, you know, when we were getting that breakout last week, we, we were talking about, I was like, this has major potential. Be watching now. Did I know we were going to move up $300? I didn't know that, but <laughs> yeah. So some other like consolidation winners here, if you were looking at trading anything, 
Um, in the semiconductor space, there's a few, in my opinion. Number one, AMAT, A-M-A-T, Applied Materials. Really interesting if it breaks above basically 240, 238.5. Um, very interesting there. And then ASML. These are other names we've been mentioning. Now, ASML is on a little bit of a dip, but it was really nice. We mentioned on that little flag, the breakout. You popped up, obviously, to like 1,082. Um, ASML looks good. Only thing you're really looking for is to mount back above 1057. Above that, you look decent. But again, I'm telling you right now, you're going to pay a pretty penny for some of these contracts. IV is a little bit high. Um, it is what it is, right? That's just what you're doing. Like you're, you're, you got to pay to play, right? Um, now, um, a stock that we haven't mentioned a lot about Tesla, um, and I've been pretty quiet on Tesla, but Tesla has sparked some interest from me after this week. Um, and I want to explain exactly why, because I think Tesla's interesting, but I don't, I'm not getting overconfident or falling in love with it yet. Like Apple, I'm in love with like, dear God, I love the stock, but Tesla you're getting to the point to where you're seeing really interesting action here. So Tesla IV, um, I probably should just pay for Market Chameleon like to look at some of this stuff. Um, but your IV like has been kind of tragic. Like if we go back, I, I can't pull back the data from you know all the way back last year. Um, but your IV, you know, tends to stay pretty high. Like it stays kind of elevated. It just is what happens with Tesla. Um, but the IV has been really dropping. Like he had a nice spike here and then he just dropped off. And you usually don't see that with Tesla. It's where you just fall off a cliff, right? Now you've seen some of these where you'll steadily drop, which makes more sense with the stock like Tesla because it's just a pretty volatile name in general. But you're actually getting some value on these contracts now that you haven't really had before, which is really, really, really interesting. So uh, I'm not saying to start hammering longs on Tesla by any means. You had the stuff with Elon Musk and the, you know, the payment thing, uh, the compensation, but it's interesting. Now, what I'm really looking for is to get back above 194. The 194 level is your previous low that you had back here uh, was on your October of this past year, that little dip where you bounced off of it goes even further back than that as well. But that's your major level. Then getting above like the 200 SMA on the daily and then the weekly. But Again, the point is, is like I'm, you're able to find a little bit of like I told you guys about uh, Netflix last week. It made sense. It was like they were just too cheap. Well, same thing kind of on Tesla. Like, again, they're not super cheap, but compared to what they have been, they're interesting. Right. So, again, worth mentioning, worth watching, even on the dip that we've had from those, you know, that high push. They're only down 28 percent on like some like the August contracts. To me, that's interesting. You look back at these contracts and you can see the high on these were around 14 dollars on that push up that we had. Now, I'm not saying you're going back to 180 or anything like that, but I'm just saying it starts to look a little bit more appetizing. Cause again, the lows in these contracts were around $6, give or take, you know, back on June 11th, right? And you're sitting kind of at like a $7 ratio right now, it's like a 200, right? So again, the value just kind of comes back into play. Definitely be watching these. Um, and I am watching Tesla like a hawk now. You'll see me post more about it on Twitter if you're following me there. But above 194, it's a beautiful play. I think the upside is crazy. I think they can start making a lot of money as well. Okay, just throw that out there. Be watching it, whatever. Um, yeah, so things I'm watching there. Um, also, too, I talked about what's happening with um, home prices, mortgage values, mortgage rates, etc. Um, I think Home Depot is very interesting, back above the 200 daily moving average. Um, you had a really nice base down here as well. That was really tough. I haven't really talked too much about it. Double bottom. Um, you need to like break above like the previous high you had here. But I do think like you're looking pretty decent. Now, what I will say here on Home Depot is you have you have some levels here. This is this is the scary part right here. If I bring the VRVP up. You're gonna be able to see. Da, 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 da. Let me bring it all the way back. Sorry. Let me bring it back. Let's just bring it back into highs right there. You're gonna be able to see. You're gonna be illiquid over basically 351. That little previous high there. But you're gonna start seeing liquidity back around 358. If you get back above 358, you can start moving up quickly. Um. So again, I am watching this. You're at a big level right now. Um. So worth mentioning. But again, um. I'm kind of sitting tight on this name. Uh, Lowe's is another like name you could try to trade here as well. You are coming into resistance. Lowe's above 237 is a long, in my opinion. But until then, you got to be really, really, really patient. Again, since that previous low right there, that's what you're looking for right there is a breakout there. Those are the names I'm liking. Um, kind of a different video on the day. If you guys have questions, make sure you ask. Um, we have the newsletter went out today. I'll have a lot of stuff on Twitter. I'm trying to get more stuff out for you guys. But have a good one, guys. I appreciate it. Happy Father's Day. See you guys tomorrow.